the adoption of the Bitcoin network is going through some very tough times. And it's quite interesting to see at the same time that the Bitcoin dominance is soaring, we are barely 20% below an all-time high. At the same time, in terms of new adoption, we are seeing lows only seen once a bull market ends. I want to find some sense in this quite bearish move for this metric at this point in time in the bull market. I also want to talk about what could be the effects of this sustained downtrend in adoption and whether we can recover from this without necessarily going into a bear market. Guys, if you like this type of content, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And if you feel like supporting the channel, watch this video until the very end and do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below. Those two things are sending a strong message to the YouTube algorithm that this content is worth watching by more people. What is this metric? The number of unique addresses that appear for the first time in a transaction of the native coin in the network. In very simple words, it's a metric that shows us how many people are not just creating a new wallet, but actually doing their first transaction, proving that they're actually using the network. The more people do that, the more obvious that we are in a bull market. In bear markets, very rarely people think, oh, I'm going to create a new wallet and I'm going to start transacting Bitcoin. That is something that occurs a lot more in a bull market. But this bull market is different. And we're going to talk a little bit about the factors that are changing that nature of Bitcoin without necessarily being too self-complacent. First, I'm going to explain how we interpret this data, and then we're going to look into these red lines and green lines. What do they mean? At the bottom of the chart, you're going to see the whole history of Bitcoin. I have it intentionally together with the data coming from the activity in the network. And the actual metric is these lines that are going up and down fastly. In order to interpret it a little bit easier, I have added two MAs. One is a 30-day MA and the other one is a yearly MA. The shorter term is the yellow one and the longer term is the blue one. The patterns are very obvious in the beginning of the history of Bitcoin. For example, here we are focusing in 2011. We can see the first bull run of Bitcoin that makes it to $30. And you can see how the number of new addresses transacting for the first time peak after the blow of top. And from the top of the monthly MA, I have placed a red line with the intention of measuring the full move in terms of adoption that there was from the peak of the market to the bottom of the metric. And you can see that right after the blow of top, this dumps in activity almost 68%. That's a massive drop in activity in terms of new people adopting the network and transacting. You can see also how it breaks below the yearly MA and during the bear market, it remains below the same MA. You can see how throughout the bear market, it stays there. On a bullish breakout of the monthly above the yearly, we start seeing activity in the network. And this slowly but steadily takes us back into another bull run. You can see in the early days how the bull run goes higher. We have massive drawdowns in these early bull runs. This one, for example, is 73% drawdown within the bull market. Impressive. And this still makes the blow of top at $1,250 approx. From that new blow of top, we can see that the activity in the monthly MA drops now barely 28%. Even though we enter in a bear market once again in 2015 with a double bottom in here, the activity in the network continues to grow. People continue to use Bitcoin in that bear market in particular. Now we're going to see the most recent activity and you're going to see how things change dramatically. As we approach the top of the 2017 bull market, now we are going back into a massive drawdown in terms of activity in the network. Once again, we see a 58% drawdown from the top of the monthly MA to the bottom. 
From that bottom, the activity continues to go higher even in the bear market. Of course, there are waves up and down, but overall, the MAs are pointing up pretty much both of them. This red line in particular that I'm showing, it's reminding me that that's the time where we see a breakdown of the support in here. The moment we cross that support, we can confidently say, at least in this bull run, that it's over, that we just have entered a bear market. From that point in time, we continue going lower up until we finally have a breakout above the MA. And that is this green line. Most of the times up until then, when we cross the long time MA on this metric, we're calling for a bottom of a bear market. In this period in 2019 and approaching COVID, there are tons of anomalies because the activity in the network shows how unconfident people were as we approach this area in here. And that makes a lot of sense because the price was constantly putting lower lows, just like we are doing in these days. Eventually, this meant a drawdown of 63% with a price of around 5K and then a rally towards 64K. You can see once again, we have a cross in there and then here we have a bearish cross that also tells us that we are entering into a bear market. Notice that this drawdown in here that we are having in terms of the monthly moving average on the metric is barely 38%. And we have a very nice dead cut bounce that pushes the price once again into an all-time high at 69K. And we were monitoring this indicator in this channel constantly in this area, looking for breakouts of the monthly above the yearly. And you can see that here we have the breakout right at the FTX collapse. At that point, we call for the end of the bear market purely based on this metric. Later in 2023, we broke below once again, and then the metric became completely erratic. Notice that we did a double top at 557,000 transactions, which coincides with the top of 2021 market. So we have never had more new unique addresses that transact for the first time as high as the top of the 2021 market, which is quite worrying because we will expect that if the price is going higher, there will be more transactions, right? And here it comes one of the biggest fears from some Bitcoin maxis, which is we shouldn't have done the Bitcoin spot ETF because true, they're going to buy a lot, but they're planning to buy and hold and it, maybe they don't even do a one-to-one -one transaction for every time someone buys and sells. Looking at these drawdowns in red that we are seeing here, we have 58%, 38%, and since the double top, we have almost 55%. And we have to say one thing, it only took 40% to enter into a bear market in 2021. And in 2014, 28% to enter into a bear market. Of course, we have had 68%, we have had 58%, which is greater than this number. So you could argue that there's still way to go and Bitcoin can still survive and not enter into a bear market. Low number of new wallets open doing transactions for the first time is not likely to destroy the Bitcoin network, but a sustained decline can definitely have implications. This definitely means that there is a slowdown in the adoption of Bitcoin, at least in a native way, without any ETFs, without any derivatives. And it confirms that the interest at the moment remains very low. There are some peaks at some points triggered by some isolated events, but we remain pretty much most of the time below the 20% of interest, which is far, far, far away from what we saw at the peak of the previous bull market. It's obvious to me that we are only counting number of transactions. We are not necessarily counting how much Bitcoin, in fact, is being transacted. We have mentioned multiple times in the channel that this bull run has been the institutional only kind of bull run. Recently, we heard that institutions are even buying into MicroStrategy as a way to get that exposure. But in previous bull runs, 
there was a massive interest from retail. And retail was constantly buying and selling, doing their speculation in the network with their own funds. And for that to happen, what we need is liquidity. And we have had quite a long time now of very high interest rates and the money printer has been restricting the economy up to a point that people are even struggling to pay the basic things. So certainly retail, the last thing that they have in their minds at the moment is to use their spare cash to invest in such a risky kind of asset. During 2021, there were also other aspects, like for example, we were in the middle of a pandemic and people had all this extra cash coming from bonuses from the government, trillions being printed out of thin air, and people really didn't know what to do with it. And since everybody was at home watching YouTube, that was one of the only ways to get fun during those days. That shows how high and pronounced were these peaks of activity. Now, if you notice, there's starting to appear here a bounce. Whether this is going to be a dead cat bounce like we saw in the second half of 2021, impossible to tell, but it's very clear to me that we are trying to close the gap between the monthly and the yearly. If we were to reclaim this green line and come back above this double top, that will certainly confirm that retail is back and that potentially we are due for resuming the bull market, this time not just being institutions, but also retail. If that retail never comes back, we are probably going to look into this double top in the future and think, whoa, that was the top of the bull market of 2024. I should have sold right after I saw this metric. New users adopting the network for the first time tend to be a lot more engaged than old users. Long-term holders are very quiet. They accumulate for a period of time, adding to their stack. And once they're done with the stack, they just watch it go up. They look for areas where the risk is just too high and then they dump, as simple as that. New users speculate a lot. They end up buying too much, selling too often, led by their emotions. They're a lot more active with decentralized applications as well. And it is a fact that all these people are not here at this point in time. The other effect of this metric being so low at this point in time in the market is that it's affecting the perception of advanced users. I'm sure that there are many more people observing these metrics and thinking, wait a minute, this is something quite scary. In innovation and development, it's quite common to look in what is the actual growth of this particular business. Healthy metrics on those aspects tend to increase the confidence of new investors as well. And seeing it almost dumping hard for over six months, it's not something that you can take as a joke. Also, the composition of the network has changed a lot. In 2021, there was a healthy combination of large holders, wells, and newcomers, retail. The impact of the wells in such an environment was less than nowadays. If you think about this network, nowadays composed largely by institutions and wells, of course, they have a way larger say when they want to manipulate the price versus if we had that network balance. When Bitcoin was pumping in early 2021, most of the wells pulled out in between 20 and 30K and the investors that were responsible for taking Bitcoin over 60K were pretty much all of them retail. Riddle comes late and they get burnt. Wells invest very early and they pull out very early as well. So let's talk about why low new wallet transactions might not necessarily be catastrophic. Bitcoin adoption often mirrors what the indexes are doing. And we might be just in one of those internal cycles where the fear is increasing and once it's gone, then we can continue. For example, we are in the middle of the summer season, which tends to be a lot quieter than the rest of the year. We could also say that there is a shift in focus. Maybe more mature users are joining the Bitcoin network and instead of quantity, now we have quality of users. It could also come from layer two solutions or off-chain activity. Some people might be focusing more on the lighting network rather than creating new wallets. And of course, one of the consequences of becoming a store of value is that you lock down the value and then you just wait. 
meaning that you don't necessarily need to create new wallets or do too many transactions. So in my opinion, in order to validate the idea that the interest in the Bitcoin network has declined too much to remain in a bull market, we need to wait for the end of the summer season and we need to see the monetary policy activating the economy. And then we will see what happens to the network as a reaction to all this new stream of liquidity into the system. Will that help pushing this into the MA or whether it's going to break out and put a new high? No one knows. But whichever happens, if you follow me on Twitter, I'll keep you updated with these metrics. I closely monitor what's going on. I'm quite interested to hear as well from the miners constantly what are they thinking and what's their sort of stress at the moment. Remember, we just had a minor capitulation and the hash rate has managed to remain healthy still. Guys, I'm currently hosting a position airdrop. You trade with $100 and they give you additional $500 for free to trade any of the coins listed on the screen. And if you use my referral link from the description, you can unlock up to 30,000 in rewards. Later, you can join my Discord server and use that new Bybit account to claim 70% discount on any of the trading parrot subscriptions. Don't worry if you already have a Bybit account. I left on Discord a link with instructions on how to transfer to my referral so you can still claim the perks. And make sure you watch this video on how to get a digital residence card in Palau so you can trade on Bybit pretty much from anywhere in the world using leverage, trading bots, whichever you like. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.